Good evening. At this time, I'd like to call to order the February 6, 2024 Stanley County Board of Education meeting to order. Welcome to those of you in attendance and those of you watching live stream. We appreciate you being here and your support of Stanley County Schools. I'm going to start the night off with the invocation and the pledge, so if you'll join me for the invocation. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us all here together, for allowing us a time to come together and converse and make the best decisions we can possible for our school system. It's in your holy name we pray. Amen. You'll join me for the pledge. We have several outstanding recognitions we would like to go over tonight, and I'll now turn the meeting over to Dr. Dennis for our recognitions. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the board. First individuals we would like to recognize tonight are our Stanley Stars. Uh, we have two schools that will be recognized. Uh, one is Baden and the other is Indy Elementary. We're going to start with Baden. And first I'd like to call up Ms. Shelley Udy, instructional coach. Ms. Udy is not here today, uh, but I would like to read what was written about her from her principal. Um, Baden School is loved and cared for by many staff, parents, and community members, but there is one staff member who stands out as the biggest what, what cheerleader of all. This person is Ms. Shelley Udy. She serves as an instructional coach, is, the care and sit, is a care and sit team member, and also a first responder. She goes above and beyond as a leader that provides weekly staff development and support, braves the weather as a greeter in the car rider line in the mornings, and as a name caller in the afternoons. Always has a smile and a kind word for everyone, and has endless dedication to making Baden School the best. Oh, where'd she come from? <laughs> She's hiding from. Well, I'm not even done yet, Miss Edie. Her love for school, student, staff, and parents is evident in all she does every day. She's a 22-year-old edu veteran educator who has spent the last five years at Baden dedicated to ensuring that teachers and students have all the knowledge and skills to grow academically. Her impact is evident, and her yearly successful Baden Watts have shown and has again led the school to exceed expected growth. On behalf of everyone at Baden, we congratulate Ms. Shelley Udy on being our Stanley Star, and she would say at the end of this speech, what, what? <laughs> Next, I would like to recognize Miss Sandy Lambert. I know she's here, I saw her earlier. So Baden Schools has many staff members that work as a team to provide our students with the best of care. Many people have taken on various roles to ensure our students have what they need, but one person that does two jobs and more is Ms. Sandy Lambert. She serves Baden as the data manager, medication administrator, care team member, and a bus driver. Her day begins in the early morning hours as she drives bus 60 and ends in the late afternoon ensuring her students are safely transported. During the day, she juggles maintaining records while giving students medication as needed. One Baden student even says she wants to be like Miss Lambert and have her job when she grows up. What a compliment is to have such a child's admiration. Miss Lambert has a history of service and has served two terms on the Stanley County Schools Board of Education and 10 years of service with Stanley County Schools. She takes pride in all she does, but especially proud of her family, which include her husband, Mike, four children, and one adorable grandson, Henry. On behalf of everyone at Baden, we congratulate Ms. Sandy Lambert on being our Stanley Star. Right. 
Next, for Indy Elementary School, I'd like to recognize Miss Renee Honey, instructional assistant. Miss Honey has been working in Stanley County Schools for 35 years. She currently serves as a teacher assistant for second grade and is the go-to for all things in the school. Whether you need a laminator fixed or have a student that needs one, <laughs> one support, Miss Honey is the person to go to. She is patient, patient, compassionate, and flexible, which means she cares about all students as well as her colleagues. She is willing to throw on whatever hat she needs each day in order to meet the needs of the students. Thank you. And last but certainly not least, Mr. Christian Caldwell, fifth grade math teacher. <laughs> Mr. Caldwell is a fifth grade teacher with the natural ability to reach students in the classroom. When you walk into his classroom, you immediately feel the sense of comfort and the positive environment he has created. Although he is considered a beginning teacher, he is already a strong educator with a wide variety of instructional tools. His passion for student success goes beyond the classroom and frequently shows up for student athletic games and around the county and volunteers to lead student clubs. Mr. Caldwell is a remarkable role model for all students and an inspiring colleague for all staff. And I would also like to say he is my daughter's teacher. She loves him dearly and he does an outstanding job. Thank you, Mr. Caldwell. Do Dr. Dennis, if you'll just, Dr. Dennis, if you'll just have all award winners wait until the very end, we'll come down at the very end. Next, I would like to call forth our 2024 Stanley County Schools Science Fair winners. In the elementary division, first place from Oprah STEM, Kelly Yao. Second place, also from Oprah STEM, Trinity Austin. And third place from Locust Elementary School, Maggie Eford. For our middle grade division, we have a team from Oprah STEM of Lexi Greger, Kendley Harris, and Ansley Yao. like your enthusiasm. <laughs> Next, let's uh, recognize some more educators, and these are our National Board Renewal teachers. Uh, we do not have a certificate for them, as they get a real nice certificate from all their hard work from National Board. Uh, first is Miss Amy Louder from Locust. I have Katherine Height from West Stanley High School. <laughs> Tasha Curley Springer from Aquadale. <laughs> and Jennifer Carpenter Yao from Locust.
Thank you. Next, I would like to call forth Mr. Matt Berenger. Mr. Berenger here. There he is. <laughs> I was going to say, his, his wife's with him also. And, and, the, and the boss. <laughs> so, Sawtooth, and you're going to have to help me with this, but Sawtooth uh, Oak Farm Hunt donated a track wheelchair to a Stanley, uh, excuse me, a South Stanley Middle School student in the forestry program. Would you like to just tell us a little more about that? I know you guys have been involved with philanthropy before, but I mean, that's, that's pretty great uh, that y'all can do that if you would like to just kind of expound on that. The teacher just, just reached out and said that she had heard that we had uh, we had the availability to, to provide a track or potential track chairs for kids uh, or adults. Uh, we do handicapped deer hunts, uh, and we were able to we try to keep a track chair at the farm if we can for anybody in the community that needs one. If they're going to the beach with an elderly parent and they want to try to get on the beach, these track chairs will go anywhere. Uh, and this child that they had at, uh, at that school needed one to be able to go out and do the forestry program that they had. Uh, so she asked if we had one, we did, we took it to them, we just left it at the school and we'll leave it there until, until they don't need it any longer. Well, we greatly appreciate it. And I have a, uh, from the Board of Education, a certificate of appreciation uh, in recognition of your generosity and support to the community, especially the students of Stanley County Schools. We thank you so much. Do you want us to come down now or after? Uh, I want to do one more thing, if you don't mind. Um, I would like to recognize well, the North Carolina School Board Association Academy of School Boardship. Board members must earn a minimum of 30 hours of training each academic year, running from July 1st through June the 30th. Once the minimum requirement has met, annual recognition is then given. The following Stanley County Schools Board of Education members achieved this honor during the 2022-2023 school year. Ms. Carla Poplin, Certificate of Achievement, Ms. Glenda Watson, Certificate of Advanced Achievement, and Ms. Vicki Watson, Certificate of Distinction. I have your certificates here if you'd like to come and get them. Thank you. Just the girls, nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> 
Next on our agenda tonight is um, the Celebrate CTE Month. Uh, Dr. Dennis, I'm going to turn that over to you. Ms. Brown, did you are uh, here to uh, tell us about Celebrate CTE Month? I think you have a presentation for us, maybe? Yes. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board. I'm Sandy Brunden, the Curriculum and Instructional Management Coordinator for CTE. Mandy Melton apologizes for not being able to be here with us this evening. February is National Career and Technical Education Month. The mission of Career and Technical Education, or CTE, is to empower all students to be successful citizens, workers, and leaders in a global economy. CTE gives purpose to learning by emphasizing real-world skills and practical knowledge. Programs in, C in CTE are designed to con tribute to the broad educational achievement of students, including putting into practice skills such as reading, writing, and mathematics, as well as their ability to work independently and as part of a team, thinking creatively, solving problems, and utilizing technology. These tools and experiences make school more relevant 
and ensure students to be ready for the real world. Whether students plan to further their education <laughs> through technical schools, community colleges, four-year colleges and universities, receive on-the-job training, or pursue careers in the military, CTE can be the first step in a pathway toward productive employment and citizenship. I would like to highlight a few um, parts of our CTE program. With a focus on workforce development, we have increased our course offerings to include electrical trades, hospitality and tourism, marketing, health science exploration, and sports and event marketing. We also now have a middle school career develop, development coordinator who facilitates career exploration and opportunities with all of our middle school students. Workplace credentials are an important focus in CTE. Students have the opportunity to leave high school with an industry-recognized credential, showing that they are college and career ready. Last year, our CTE students, with the help of this staff, earned 3,097 workplace credentials. And this fall, the total number of credentials earned is already at 2,853. Another focus of CTE includes job shadowing, internships, advanced studies, pre-apprenticeships, and apprenticeships. These opportunities help connect students with local businesses and industries, giving the students on-the-job experiences. Last school year, 118 <coughs> students participated in these opportunities. This fall, 47 students have also completed internships, advanced studies, and pre-apprenticeship programs, and 31 more are currently enrolled for this semester. A highlight and proud, proud point for us is that we have eight students enrolled in our automotive, firefighter, and early childhood pre-apprenticeship programs. Career and technical student organizations play an important role in CTE. We are proud that all four high schools currently have Skills USA and National Technical Honor Society chapters. And three of the high schools and one of our middle schools have a very active FFA chapters. These organizations are under the leadership of our CTE teachers. Last year, students competed at the regional and state level for Skills USA, with one student advancing to nationals. This year, we look to increase the number of students participating in areas including masonry, woodworking, medical skills, <coughs> drafting, automotive, and culinary, just to name a few. Our FFA organizations, under the leadership of their school advisors, continue to represent Stanley County through their participation in leadership development workshops and camps, in community service activities, along with local, regional, state, and national competitions. We are very proud that our teachers are leaders in the state. Many of these teachers have served on committees to develop statewide curriculums and assessments. They have attended workshops where they are then tasked with sharing and training fellow staff members along with being presenters at statewide conferences. Usually, our CTE teachers like to step back and showcase their students, but tonight, we would like to recognize these teachers for the impact they have on our students. At this time, we recognize the Stanley County Schools CTE Department, 29 high school teachers, five middle school teachers, and five career development coordinators, and thank them for all that they have done and continue to do for the students of Stanley County. Thank you.
Ms. Brunden, I see you have some uh, individuals with us today, if you'd like to recognize them as well. Um, Not individually, but you know, yeah, you I have, you <laughs> we have, I, I know we have teachers and coordinators today. and we have several yeah. people. We have, um, well, our, our um, teachers stand up. Let's do that. And we have the full gamut of, of CT teachers and, and clean middle, we have a brand new middle school. Um, teacher that we're very proud of and our high school teachers and then we have um, several of our CDCs our career development coordinators are here too if they'll stand please <laughs> and, one, and one supportive husband <laughs> <laughs> uh, CTE staff, after Miss Bailey takes your photo, if you want to just sort of circle around, we'll just kind of shake your hand and thank you if you don't mind. Next on the agenda is um, public participation at board meetings, and we don't have anyone signed up to speak tonight. Yeah, he wants to do it at the end. We have conferred, and <laughs> we're going. Next on the agenda is closed session. So I need a motion to go into closed session. Four. <clears throat> Student matters. NC General Statute One Forty Three Dash Three Eighteen Dot Eleven A Six. Student matters. NC General Statute One Forty Three Three Eighteen. 11A1 and attorney client matters NC General Statute 143.318.11A3. I move we go into closed session. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? We're now in closed session. At this time, I'm going to call us back into open session. Now, next on our agenda is public participation at board meetings. We did not have any speakers sign up tonight, so we will move on to the consent agenda. Um, 
board members, you have had um, time to look at items in the consent agenda. I will now entertain a motion to approve. Uh, to approve the minutes from the January 4th, 2024 <coughs> regular board meeting. Motion to approve. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Okay, this has passed. Next, we have committee reports. Uh, first up, I have facilities and Ms. Robin Whitaker. We did have a meeting on February 2nd. Um, we had a really good meeting. I, I encourage you to read your minutes. That, that really is a good synopsis of everything that we discussed that day, but we spent a lot of time just discussing the resolution that we received from the county commissioners uh, concerning school capital funding. So hopefully sometime in the near future we'll have, a, have another meeting or another work session and um, continue to move forward with things. Thank you. Um, next, I have finance, and that's Mr. Lewis, but he is not here tonight, so I'm going to move on to um, instructional with Ms. Glenda Gibson. The instructional committee met um, January the 25th, um, 2024. Um, it was a great meeting, and um, I had um, asked Mr. Plummer um, if he would go over with all the board members um, some information that he presented at our meeting. So, Mr. Plummer, I'm going to um, turn things over to you. Thank you, Ms. Gibson. Um, more than anything at our instructional committee meeting, we really wanted to focus on where are we, what are we doing, where are we going? and one focus that we really tried to make and put that bad COVID word behind us and not use that as an excuse anymore is really diving in and looking at our growth. How are we growing our students? What are we doing day in and day out? What efforts are we putting forth to support teachers, to support students as they move forward? And one of the things that um, Ms. Raper and I spoke with the instructional, instructional committee about was trying to really be intentional with principals and with teachers and what does planning look like day in and day out? How are we being intentional and knowing that we are focusing on our standards, we're hitting those standards hard, we're using every minute of that instructional time while we're there. Really focusing on PLCs and diving into data. Where do we see that things are working? Where do we see things aren't working? And how can we problem solve to go further into what's going on and what's happening in our classrooms? And one of the things that we kind of got off on in, in talking about a little bit was looking at our iReady data that has come back for our students at middle of the year. And iReady is an instructional program that we can use both for instruction and for assessment. What we looked at really focuses on the assessment. We've been in school for half the year. How have we grown? Our kindergarten through eighth grade students all complete the math diagnostic in iReady. And our students in grades four through eight complete the reading diagnostic. Kindergarten, first, second, third grade are on a state assessment M class, so they're not included in this, so they're not doing double the assessment along the way and taking that instructional time away. In addition to elementary and middle school, our Math 1 students and our English 1 students and our high schools also complete this just to give them another data point that they can look at. Um, they can't do the instructional side of it, but they, they do have the ability to go through and just have that assessment to gauge where they are in their instruction along the way. So what you have in front of you here is a presentation. I've taken out the um, parts that go so deep that it can be over our heads in some of it just to make it make more sense. But if you look at slide three, um, <clears throat> looking at our math data, each of these dots in the quadrants here represents one of our schools. 
And each of those schools has been compared to national norms that iReady is digging back to 2018, 2017, 2018, to be able to compare their historical data and where we are. If you look, there are, if the colors are very slightly different, but there are four different quadrants, starting in that top right, high performance, high growth, to the left, low performance, low growth, to the bottom, low performance and growth, high performance, low growth. What we really wanna see is everybody moving toward that top right. We wanna to see top performance and we wanna see top growth. But in thinking about that growth and where we've been the past couple years and trying to get back on that trajectory to lead us in the right way, we want to see everybody starting to go over that mid midline, not the dot line, but the line at 50. That middle line is, is the median score of where um, the middle score landed in 2017, 2018. What we're trying to do is cross that 50 line. And if you notice here with that math graph, we're seeing our students show that growth. We also want them to move toward the right also to get to that high performance at the same time, but being able to inch up to those quadrants to get that growth, we're showing that what our teachers are doing, how our teachers are supporting students, we're making those moves from the beginning of the year to the middle of the year. If you look at slide four, it does the exact same thing with math, but instead of looking at it by school, we're looking at it by grade level. So we're, we see that those eighth graders have really pushed, they, they've really hit that target. In every single grade level across the board though, K through eight, we are seeing they're all in that high growth portion of it. We've got to continue to refine what we're doing and find those strategies to get to our students' needs so that we're get pushing over to not just low performance, high growth, but high performance, high growth. So our students are making that growth. We've just got to get them comfortable in those skills so that they also get the performance that comes with it. If you skip to slide six, it's going to do the same thing, but with reading. Um, reading obviously looks a little different. We've got some outliers there. One at the very top, one of the schools is showing very high performance and very high growth. And if you look down at the bottom, there's a blue dot stuck in that low growth down there. Other than those two outliers, everybody there again, we've got a couple that are just on the brink of hitting into, that, into those high growth quadrants, but needing them to get up there. Other than that, the majority of those schools are landing in that growth. We're getting the growth. We're able to move them. We've just got to get them back up on grade level so that they are par with where the expectation should be. Same thing with slide seven, it's just going to show it by grade level. Again, all grade levels are hitting that growth. We're just seeing a lot more growth, for instance, in sixth and seventh grade um, than we are with some of those lower grade levels. So it's, it's getting them there. We've just got to turn that growth now into performance, turn that growth into grade level on par where we need them to be really hitting those standards. Um, along with that conversation came rigor. And um, I think a lot of times rigor can be a scary word in a classroom, but we are, we are at a time that we have no choice but to embrace rigor. And what can we do to really push our students and get them at their top performance levels? We had a lot of great conversations about AIG and taking our AIG program and redesigning it. What can we do to hit those students head on early in elementary school so that they are prepared for advanced courses in middle school, to make them prepared for even more advanced courses um, in high school, to then make them college and career ready leaving high school. Um, we've talked through some ways that we can help support the AIG program. Uh, we were fortunate last year to offer a partnership with Pfeiffer and had a cohort that teachers were able to get an AIG add-on licensure through Pfeiffer University. Um, but in a way to potentially bring in more teachers and have more conversations around what's really happening with rigor in those classrooms, specifically middle school classrooms and really supporting those teachers and those students is being able to provide a way for us to 
add a local endorsement for AIG, that it would not necessarily have to be a partnership with the university, but for us to take that on in-house and to offer some courses to teachers on work days or be able to provide substitutes for them to come in and collaborate, work together, work on some rigorous lesson plans and units that they can put together to support students at all levels. Um, and be able to have more of those teachers who are strengthened with those skills in front of our students rather than one per school be able to have two per grade level and have students that are able to see these teachers all day every day in and out of their classrooms. So um, we've got some good things in the works to be able to make that happen and, and to work. We've got um, middle school principals have a lot of momentum behind them to help support this initiative and to really help their students. So we're excited to be able to develop that and bring that on for the fall. I just want to add one thing. Um, you know, I task Lynn and his team and our administrators. If we're going to get our kids all into the high performance, high growth, it all starts with rigor, in my opinion. The uh, teachers have to be teaching to the standards, know the standards, the students have to know the standards. And I don't just mean rigor and actual, you know, the, the teaching component of it, but also the assessment component. Rote memorization is not going to get you into that quadrant. You got to be able to understand the standards, understand the material, and be able to apply it. And compliance grades aren't going to get us there either. So I've tasked them with making sure that we put things into place to where the rigor of the instruction, the alignment of the instruction, and the rigor in the assessment match so that we know that our kids know how to use what they're being taught. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Plover, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Um, I know you just kind of touched a little bit on the AIG and you were talking about it in the elementary grades. Right. How often are those students in those grade levels served with that? Well, and th that that's, was part of our conversation too at our committee meeting is the fact that if we go back in time, we've kept a historical record of AIG budget and all of our AIG budget goes directly to personnel. And we can go back um, all the way to, I think, 2012 is as early as we were keeping it. And at the time, we were able to have 14 AIG teachers. We are now, um, we now have six, three in elementary schools and three that work with our middle schools. And in the elementary world, with having three, that has them with four teacher, I mean, four schools apiece that they're going between to get to. Um, again, then within those schools, they're working with nurturing students as early as first grade, and then students are getting, getting identified typically in fourth grade, sometimes in third grade. So getting to those different grade levels, getting to those different contents um, is a struggle with four. So in part of that redesign, what we talked about, what can we do to help in the middle schools that may help us to open up and have more support to bring down to the elementary school? So if back then when they had one school apiece or two schools apiece, now they're sitting at four. What can we do to get back to that so that they're just shared between one or two schools, depending on the number of, of identified students in the school versus traveling around to four schools during a week? And with that ratio, our students are not being served the way they really need to be. Right, and, and I, I think sometimes it, it um, comes across because it is funded so much differently than what we see we want to say that every school has its own EC teacher, or um, but it EC is funded completely differently than AIG, and that local, not that local, the state funding that comes down for AIG just does not support those those positions like that. And we see the same thing with ESL, even though it's federal, we still don't we can't we don't pay for ESL teachers with federal dollars. But um, when we have ESL teachers that are serving as many as eight schools, depending on the populations. Yeah, to get to the number of teachers we've had before, you know, you used to talk about 2012, or the way it used to be funded, it would be an infusion of local current expense right. that would have to be because it's, it's not, not being funded the way it used to be funded. Mm -hmm. Mr. Plummer, I, I um, <clears throat> and to say this like with board members who, um, were not a part of that instructional committee. I know that I was, I felt excited um, to have the conversations that we did, um, to see certainly um, the growth of our, our students and how, I know everyone's working hard. I know from, from 
the county office to, you know, our administrators, our, our teachers. Everyone's working really, really hard. And um, AIG certainly is a passion of mine. And um, like, like I said, it's exciting to think that, you know, I guess we use that word revamping, um, but just just thinking about a local endorsement um, and how many teachers hopefully might jump on board, you know, with that, to, you know, to give us more strength there mm -hmm. in in teaching our students that that are identified. And I really um, I really do see that as we start at that elementary level. Um, and, and move into that middle, then we really see in that high school students, I hope, that are wanting to take those higher level honors and, you know, and I want to see us getting back to that offering of AP classes. Um, well, and that that's, was our big thought with it is it's, we can't just rely on that state budget coming right. at us. So how can we think outside the box mm -hmm. and how can we give more teachers that skill set, more teachers that power mm -hmm. to be able to support those students as early as we can um, and not just rely on those state positions to be able to do that work. We've got teachers who can do that work because they they can put that rigor behind what they're doing to support those students. Right. I appreciate um, all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have personnel with Dr. Leffler. We have not had a committee meeting, so no report. Policy, Ms. Vicki Watson. Board members, those policies will be available for review for 30 days, uh, and for the public, they will also be available via board docs. Safety and security, Mr. Sorensen. Thank you, Madam Chair. We met yesterday for a little while to get an uh, update from Jennifer Flo where we are, where we're going, and where we want to go as far as safety and security is involved. And because it does involve student safety, we don't go into details about what we're looking at, but. Uh, very productive meeting, and we've, we've made huge strides, but we've got a lot more work to do. Next, we have the NCSBA Legislative Committee application. And I will um, take a moment to read uh, part of this. Uh, I had the pleasure of serving on this committee um, and will be coming off uh, as I have done my four meetings for the year. Um, I highly recommend um, at least us having a nominee. It doesn't guarantee that we'll have a seat at the table, but um, at least we can try to get um, some, rep some representation um, up in Raleigh. So um, here's the memorandum from Bruce Mildorf. It says the North Carolina School Boards Association Board of Directors invites each local school board to nominate one of its members to serve on NCSBA's legislative committee. This individual should be nominated through a vote of the full board, taken in open session, and be submitted by March 22, 2024. Uh, the, the committee's primary task is to develop the draft of the NCSBA legislative agenda for consideration and adoption by the delegate assembly. Um, the meetings that this individual will have to attend are Friday, July 19, 2024, Friday, September 13th, 2024. Uh, the third meeting is a virtual meeting that will be announced. And there should be four. Maybe the fourth one is also going to be. I don't see that on here. Uh, the two in-person meetings will be held at the NCSBA office building in Raleigh. And now I will um, open it up if 
Any board members would like to nominate another board member for this committee? I just make sure um, they do ask that you um, attend all of the meetings if possible. Ms. Poplin, when um, your chair, woman, <laughs> when we when we had our work session earlier, I know that we mentioned something to Mr. Lisk. Yes. And I remember that he, you know, he said that he would serve. I, I don't know if um, he recognizes the dates. I'm not sure. But what I'm wondering is if we could nominate him and if, if for some reason, um, Hope, I know this is a question, I guess, for you, but if we reach out to Mr. Lisk and for some reason if he sees a date on there that he cannot commit to, it says that we don't have to have this in until Wednesday, March the 22nd. Could we, like, come back to it at our next board meeting then? and Or either proceed? just have, I was going to say, okay. or either just go ahead and nominate a backup okay. if he declines the nomination. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm going to nominate Mr. Lisk. Okay. I have a nomination for Mr. Lisk. Second. And a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so Mr. Lisk, and then I will go ahead and take a backup nomination just in case he is not available for those dates. Anybody else interested in serving on that committee? <laughs> okay, well, for right now, we'll just leave it at Mr. Lisk, and we may have to come back to it, uh, Ms. Miller. Okay. Thank you. And congratulations to Mr. Lewis. I think he doesn't even know that he, he got nominated. So it is, it is a really, really good neat opportunity if you get chosen not every county um, gets one of their board members chosen but um, you do have the ability to sit and listen to a lot of um, opinion from all across the state what is important legislatively to other counties and um, weigh in on that uh, that agenda and um, it, it is very interesting so hopefully he will accept his nomination Next, we have superintendent comments. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as I'm sure most of you know, tomorrow, February 7th, is World Read Aloud Day. I know some of you uh, were talking about it earlier at the work session about going out and reading. But um, World Read Aloud Day is a day dedicated not just to reading, but to the art and practice of reading aloud. Stories are passed down from generation to generation, even before writing was invented. And this day helps us bring this tradition back to reading while promoting literacy. Uh, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Don't wait till the last minute. <laughs> February 15th, as I may have done before. February 15th is SRO Appreciation Day. And uh, in, in appreciation of officers that fill a three-part role, serving as informal mentors or counselors, law educators and law enforcement officers to support students and the communities they serve. And February 19th is President's Day. As far as weeks, we have National School Counseling Week, which is February 5th through the 9th this week. And it highlights the unique contributions of school counselors and the tremendous impact school counselors can have in helping students achieve school success and plan for a career. And right behind that is Love the Bus. February 12th through the 16th, Bus Driver Appreciation highlights the important role of the yellow school bus in our communities and show appreciation for the school bus drivers who safely transport more of our children to and from school every day and we are most thankful to all of them for everything they do. Um, as you heard earlier, uh, this is CTE month. Uh, CTE month raises awareness of the role that CTE has in readying learners for college and career success. It's also a time to recognize and celebrate the achievements and accomplishments of our CTE partners at the local, state, and national level. And February is Black History Month, an annual celebration of achievements by African Americans and a time for recognizing their central role in U.S. history. Um, I have two things that I would like to recognize locally here. 
Um, first, I'd like to recognize uh, Mr. Austin Herlocker. And Mr. Herlocker um, is in the process of, uh, well, first of all, he's our beginning teacher of the year, and he's at NCAT being uh, celebrated as a beginning teacher of the year, and he was selected as one of 27 finalists for the NCAT beginning the teacher of the year. Mr. Herlocker will attend professional development during the, during the week of February 12th through the 16th at NCAT's Colloey campus. All expenses, travel and substitute, are paid for by NCAT. The winner of the NCAT beginning teacher of the year will be announced during a recognition ceremony on the evening of Thursday, February 15th. Mr. Herlocker currently teaches sixth grade at East Albemarle Elementary School. I know they're proud. And last, we have um, Stanley County Schools received a grant of $81,229 from the Center for Safer Schools. Uh, this school safety equipment grant uh, approves us to receive the funding, and we will be using the funding. Uh, right now, we're piloting and looking into weapons detection systems for some of our schools. Uh, that is all I have, and I hope everyone has a great month. Thank you. Now we have board member comment. I'm going to start with Ms. Vicki Watson. I would like to um, comment with everything Dr. Dennis said. There's so many things out there that's going on and nice things for our schools and our people. Um, the CT Award, I mean, CT Month. It's great. Um, that's a great program, and we have a lot going on with that. Our Stanley Stars were wonderful. We need all those good people in our school system. And let's see. Well, he, I know he mentioned uh, Black History Month, and when I was at Richfield, we did that. We had a unit on that every year, and that was so interesting because you would find out all these things about what they did. And I remember Harriet Tubman, we did all that. <laughs> it was just really, really interesting. And I do hope everybody has a great week and a great month. Thank you. Mr. Swanson. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll try to keep it under an hour since we've been here all day. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, I'm just going to make some more shout outs to what's, what's going on there. Uh, CT month. Uh, CT is near and dear to my heart. I could list probably 70, 80 kids that it made a huge difference in in the career path, and some of them even their life path. So uh, hats off to all our CT people. Uh, secondly, I noticed during the Science Fair Award there was no boys. That uh, makes me nervous a little bit. I think the girls have caught on that science and technology is their domain as well. So congratulations to those, those young folks. Uh, Mr. Barringer and the Sawtooth Oak Farm people, that, that is a great gesture, it's a great thing. We have kids that have different abilities, and when we can do something, even with a community sport or whatever, to include them, it, it's, it makes all the difference in the world of those kids, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, a couple things that weren't mentioned earlier, North Stanley Middle School basketball champions, conference champions, West Stanley Middle School wrestling, and South Stanley Middle School wrestling, all conference champions. So the, we got some pretty solid programs coming up. Thank you. Ms. Glenda Gibson. I just want to say congratulations to um, our Stanley Stars, Science Fair winners, um, National Board Teacher Renewals. Um, again, um, like Mr. <coughs> Sorensen said, Sawtooth Oak Farm uh, with Matt and Sarah Beringer, um, that's very special what they, what they do, and I am certainly glad that we were able to recognize them tonight. For our CTE um, presentation that was given, um, very interesting, and I'm glad that we were able to have our CTE teachers here, uh, many of them tonight, and, and recognize them. Mr. Plummer, again, thank you for your presentation. Um, it's, it's exciting to me, and I know the rest of the board with where we're going with, with instruction um, in, our, in our schools. Um, for our school counselors month, um, uh, we cannot say thank you enough to them and for all that they do. Um, appreciate them. Mr. Herlocker, that was great that he has that possibility of being selected as that winner, so um, I'm 
I'm rooting for him. I hope he gets that. It's, it's wonderful that we received that safety grant. Um, I see Miss Jennifer Flo back there. Thank you for for all you do um, for for us, and would love the bus. Mm -hmm. So, do board members like contact you or Mr. Lambert or whatever so that we might can ride a bus? I think if you would like to ride, well, yeah, just let me know and I let me know kind of what route you would like to run or what area, what times, and uh, be glad to line something up. Yeah. Okay. I'd really like that. That's all I have, Ms. Madam Chair. Ms. Robin Whitaker. Thank you. Um, I really just wanted to focus on um, Stanley Stars. I know we recognized a lot of people tonight, and but anytime we can recognize our employees, I, I, I enjoy that, and I'm very appreciative that we can do that. Um, for the ones at, at Baden, um, Ms. Udi, and then Ms. Lambert, um, I know Sandy Lambert uh, served on this board, so she knows the, um, the seats that we are sitting in and what kind of work that entails uh, and how, to sometimes you feel like your hands are tied. Um, I'm very appreciative to her for not only working in our school system, but also being willing to drive a bus. Um, so she's, she's working during the day, but she's driving a route for us in the mornings and the evenings. Um, she said when I came through, um, she's like I am at my house. We talk transportation a lot. We talk buses a lot. And so she understands that. Um, so I'm just very appreciative of her for doing that. And I, I hope we have other employees who, who will be willing to come forward and drive buses for us. There is still a bus driver shortage. There's going to continue to be a bus driver shortage. Um, but I'm very appreciative to her for that. Um, and then at Andy, um, Miss Honey, who has worked for 35 years, I just cannot even imagine. Um, but as a TA, and she and I looked at her, I said, it sounds like you're a little bit of a jack of all trades. She said, I am. I said, you know, every school needs one of those. Somebody that you go to, no matter what's wrong or no matter what needs to be fixed, you know who to go to to ask for help. And it sounds like she is that person. And then also for Mr. Caldwell. Uh, from Andy. So I'm just very appreciative of all of these people and the others that we recognize tonight. So um, we're, we're a very fortunate and blessed system. Dr. Leffler. It was great hearing all the awards of Stanley Stars. Uh, really it's special to have these uh, science fairs winners. They're uh, starting at a young age and we're looking forward to them to keep keep it up. Uh, with their competition and, and doing it each grade level. Also, it's great to see uh, Mr. Barringer and, and his wife with the uh, Sawtooth Oak Farm because here they're doing this not for recognition but out of the goodness of their heart. And this is just a small example of what's going on in our community. We have a lot of people doing things like that, but we never know about it. And we really appreciate it because that's what we need in our school system and, and in our country these days. And then it's great with the uh, CTE program. I, I remember when I started on the board, that was one of the uh, things I thought was important that we keep up. And, and it looks like with the staff we've got and uh, Ms. Melton, it's really grown. And with all our assistants and all the teachers, it's just a great program that our students Besides being college ready, a lot of them are career ready, and when they get out, they have certification that when they go out into the job world, number one, they're going to be hired in front of other people, and number two, they can get started right then. So I, I think it's excellent in uh, what's happening in the career uh, technical field. And uh, it, it's just been good to hear the meeting tonight, all the good things going on. Our students are growing, and that means they will uh, eventually get more uh, proficient. And I'm just proud of everything that's going on in our school system at this time. Um, I will ditto a lot of things that were said tonight, but I do want to start with um, the grant for $81,000 from uh, Safer Schools. <laughs> I'm very appreciative of the fact that we were able to secure that for our school system and we can implement um, some more safety things at our schools. Um, 
super appreciative for uh, SRO Appreciation Day. That was something a couple years ago we weren't sure we were going to have at all of our schools. So um, thank you to those folks that do that every day and keep our students safe. Um, I think that is one of the top priorities for um, us sitting up here is that we have students in our schools, but that we can also keep them safe during the day. So super appreciative of those folks that protect our students every day. And um, see you back there, Ms. Flo. Thank you for all you do to coordinate all those folks throughout the county and help us keep those uh, schools safe. So I'm appreciative of that. Um, I want to... Um, talk about a couple other things uh ride the bus and bus appreciation um it's a little different when you drive a bus now some i drive a smaller bus but um i have a different appreciation than i had three or four years ago for bus drivers um it is nerve-wracking to do that and so i just want to um extend a huge thank you to um all of our staff that do that and our bus drivers who are just on staff that just drive every day for us and do all those routes can't imagine um what that would be like in the early hours of the morning and afternoons but we are super appreciative uh in the same aspect for them getting our students to and from school safely each and every day so thank you um for that uh also um uh something that nobody really touched on but um the presentation from Sawtooth kind of brought it to my mind. Um, Special Olympics is getting ready to start back up. We have athletes and students uh, practicing and participating, and I believe that's coming up in April. Uh, so we'll have um, games in April, so uh, keep your eye open for that. We have um, those differently abled students that are going to be participating in that. Mr. Plummer, thank you for your presentation on uh, growth for students tonight um it's always good to see how our kids are growing and how our staff are working super hard to meet those goals and i know we'll be on that uh far right box before too long <laughs> um we're getting there uh but it was really encouraging to see so many of those blue dots headed towards the direction that um coming out of that post c word uh that we've been in it seems like for so long um it's nice to see those start to move in the right direction. Um, just want to uh, touch on uh, Black History Month. And again, uh, Mr. Harlocker, uh, if you haven't met Mr. Harlocker, you don't know him, I encourage you to stop by East at some point during a day and just follow him around for a good five minutes. I don't ever see him that he doesn't have a smile on his face and that his students aren't interacting with him. So as a beginning teacher, uh, to have that recognition and be in the running for that award that that's great so that's all I have next we have the uh, personnel agenda and I think Dr. Dennis is going to take that on for us yes you have the uh, personnel agenda report in front of you sections one and section two uh, I will need approval for section two and my recommendation is approve as presented move that we approve section two as presented of the personnel agenda so i have a motion and a second by mr Sorensen. all in favor of approving the personnel agenda section two any opposed okay that has passed our next scheduled board meeting well, uh, please note the date and time of this meeting is going to be Thursday, March 7th, 2024 at 615 with a location to be determined. And I need a motion to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor. We are adjourned.